Joining me now here on the MMA Report is one of the men's coming, the co-main event of Shamrock FC 328, come on February 22nd in Kansas City. Of course, the event will be streamed on Fight TV. It is Kalen Bourne, who is 6-1 and one in his career. Uh, I really appreciate time. I, I think uh, as I, I knew I was going to be talking to you and, and looking up your topology, the thing that really uh, stuck out to me is the last time we saw you was was over a year ago. So what's what's been going on the last 12 months? <laughs> Um, I had a, uh, had a, a small injury I had to take care of and, uh, had a little surgery done and, uh, rehabbed that, um, actually injured myself in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu match. Uh, so that's obviously detracted a little bit from my MMA career, but now I'm back on track and, uh, feel healthier than ever. And through the rehab ended up actually coming out a little stronger, uh, probably than I would have been, uh, if I wouldn't have done it. So it all kind of ended up working out for me in the end. Was the hardest part of rehab was just not being able to train? Uh, yeah, um, pr- I probably came back a little sooner than I should have. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm the co-owner at, at Shootbox KC here in town. So I see, obviously I'm instructing a lot of jujitsu classes and, uh, and and general fitness classes. So I was back on the uh, on the mats. I think within about six weeks. Uh, even though I was like, you know, in a full J brace and like hobbling around and whatnot, it's uh, uh, very hard to stay off the mats for me. It's kind of where I live six days a week. So, in, in those six weeks that that you couldn't, you know, get in the training room and and be with, you know, you, you know your your tight knit group there, uh, did did it allow you to to sit back and look at the MMA game and and maybe from a different light than maybe you had previously? Um, you know. The only thing I'm focused on, uh, you know, I, I had I had my bout with uh, Cassius Kane, which uh, when we fought, uh, he was ranked uh, 39th uh, on Tapology out of the 1300 welterweights. Um, and uh, I, you know, after beating him, I, I was training. I trained really hard because I, you know, I obviously saw that, uh, you know, I, I could hang with the the best of the guys, and, and hopefully, you know, um, bigger contracts would be around the corner. Um, I trained super hard for that for that January fight, um, and uh, ended up fighting in in Denver. Um, and uh, n- no excuses, um, you know. Obviously, uh, uh, Austin is is an amazing fighter, but I think everyone, even Pat Militich, commented on the fact that you know I live at like seven hundred you know feet above sea level, and Austin lives I think in Centennial, which is like eight thousand feet, and uh, being able to. Uh, train so hard here back in Kansas city and then go there and kind of suffer dehydration and, uh, you know, just fighting at elevation, not being well-versed in that. I felt that it really robbed me of the opportunity to, you know, display all the stuff that I had worked on, uh, that I had gotten better at. Uh, I know, you know, my professor was, was super excited to see me, uh, explain this, display the stuff that we have improved. Um, and then, you know, we got into the fight just like, Things didn't come together, and uh, I, I just totally feel that no one really saw uh, all the work that we had put in. Uh, now we're we're a year later. Um, I, I've I've been through uh, rehab, tons of strength training, and uh, that entire time I've you know been chomping at the bit to uh, to compete again, and uh, and once again try to show how much I've learned. But now we're another twelve months in, uh, and uh, and I'm I'm really excited now. I I, I think that I, I have the skills. And the training that that can break me into that upper echelon of fighters, um, and I definitely have been putting in the work through not only just the rehab but in the skill training. Uh, in terms of the opponent here, uh, Craig Farrelly, what's what's kind of your overall thoughts on him and his opponent, and what do you think um, is is the biggest asset that he brings uh, to the cage? Um, you know, obviously uh, his three wins are by submission. Um, so, and I, I do believe he's a, uh, purple belt in, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, he, uh, uh, most, the way he probably envisions beating me is through submission. Uh, uh, so with that being said, it's obviously relatively hard to finish someone, um, be a submission if you're not on the ground. So chances are that, you know, it will probably keep it standing. Uh, I'm a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, I'm actually one of the, uh, first, uh, shooter box uh, American black belts, um, which uh, is, is is a huge feather in my cap when it comes to fighting some of these other local jujitsu guys. 
Um, I think my pedigree uh, is, is a little bit stronger than theirs. Uh, on top of, you know, I've been doing jujitsu for almost 13 years. Uh, there's just not very many people that can that can say that they, uh, uh, you know, have been in the game that long. And, uh, you know, things like with any martial art, um, it's really hard to catch up on time. Uh, no matter how hard you work, uh, experience and years in a art are, are what's going to really uh, provide you the skill set that you need. It's very hard just to train harder. Uh, and become better at a martial art. You know, you, you really do need those years uh, involved in it. I'm a black belt in judo as well. I got that back in 2013. Um, and, and so once again, you know, I'm looking at 13, going on 14 years, you know, completely ingrained in the martial arts community, having it be a part of my life uh, at least five days a week. Um, and, and, and I think once again, that, that, that's, that's the difference between myself and some of the other guys. And I've said it before that a lot of people will train for fights. So I truly do live the lifestyle of a martial artist going to practice day in and day out, instructing, not just attending the practices. And as we all know, teaching things is one of the best ways to learn them. Is there a part of you, the fact of Craig's wins have come by submission that you're like, I want to take them down and I want to submit them. No, no, no. I, uh, I definitely want to knock him out. I, I want to see him unconscious in front of me. I know he doesn't like to get hit, and, and we're going to see that. Uh, almost all of his fights, once he starts to get peppered up a little bit, he tries to take it to the ground and uh, very hastily take it to the ground because he's, he's not a wrestler. Um, so with that being said, I, I was a two-time state uh, runner-up, so I placed second in Kansas uh, 6A Division twice. Um, that didn't really show in my last fight. Uh, he, uh, he, he took me down a couple times. Uh, but before then, um, I think in my, my 20 trips to the cage, I've only, through amateur and pro professional, I've only been taken down one other time. Uh, so once again, uh, if, if he's planning on submitting me, uh, hopefully he's working on his wrestling. Um, I know that I have no intentions of letting him take me down. And uh, I think he knows in the back of his head that a stand-up isn't as good as mine either. So he might be stuck between a rock and a hard place if he can't take me down, and he is forced to play on the feet. Is there any animosity that you have for him, or is it just like, man, you know what? He signed the contract. That's the worst part. He's actually like a super nice guy. Like, it's, I wish he was a butthead, and I wish I could say nasty things about him and really sell this fight. Uh, the, the best way I can sell this fight is, is he's a great athlete. Uh, I know that he's one of the like head trainers at the La Silva Academy in uh, Wichita. Uh, and um, uh, La Silva himself, if I'm also not mistaken, uh, is a third degree black belt. Um, and he is the other uh, third degree black belt in Kansas. Uh, my uh, professor being the other one. Um, so, you know, we have La Silva's head trainer, you know, fighting me, who I'm a co-owner of the gym uh, with, with my professor. Um, so to me, it's kind of the, the protégés of, of both of the third degree black belts, you know, fighting each other. With that being said, um, you know, you would think you would think that it would be, oh, well, then let's put our jujitsu against each other. Let's take him down and submit him and prove that, you know, my black belt is, mm -hmm. is legit, that, that our jujitsu is better than their schools. But uh, I promise you um, that my professor wants nothing more than for me to destroy him with Muay Thai and, and, you know, live up to the shooter box legacy of just being the most violent human being you can be in the cage. In terms of, uh, 2020, once this fight's, uh, done and over with, and of course you, you get the win, uh, you know, what, is there any goals you have set for this year in terms of what you want to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, my last two fights were for LFA. Um, I really enjoy fighting for them. Um, kind of coming back to Shamrock so I can get a, uh, a a fight here in town. I know a lot of a lot of my fans wanted to watch me again, um, and they really, you know, if I was going to continue fighting for LFA, the chances of me fighting in Kansas City were pretty slim. Uh, so I know a couple people were uh, sad that they might not ever get to uh, see me in Kansas City ever again. Uh, so coming back and, you know, it's kind of a homecoming fight, if you will, it's, you know, it's my first fight back, you know, I don't want to call it a tune up fight cause, cause you know, Craig obviously is, is finishing people. Um, so, you know, I'm not, not taking him lightly by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but definitely, you know, coming back home and being able to, 
you know, the, 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 the large, large family I have at the gym for them to be able to train with me and then come watch me is, uh, is something special to share with them. And of course, this all goes down here in the co-main event of Shamrock FC 328, February 22nd in Kansas City. Of course, streams on Fight TV. Really appreciate the time. Of course, let me know anything Fight on social media. And of course, anybody else you want to shout out? Um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, the original Kalen. Uh, all one, all one word. And you know, just shout out to you know the people who've been helping me through this past year. Uh, it's it's you know it's been a tough one, obviously. A uh, lot, lot goes on in everyone's life, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person uh, that that would like to see 2019 go away forever and never come back. Uh, I, I feel like everyone's in that boat. So yeah, 2020 is going to be going to be a, a great year, I think, for everyone um, except for Craig. Uh, but with that being said, I really, I really want to be able to get back in the cage almost immediately. I plan on dispatching him in the first round. I plan on not taking any damage, and I plan on taking a fight as soon as I can again uh, to start getting more wins in that win column. 